Hello and welcome to Electronica 2024. I'm here with Fabio Violante, who is the CEO at Arduino. And today we're going to be talking about the company's strategy for 2024 and 2025 with a focus on the Arduino Pro devices. So Fabio, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you, Pete. You're welcome. So can you tell us um, a little bit about yourself and your background, give us an introduction? Yeah, so first of all, thank you for, for this opportunity. So I'm Fabio Virante, I'm the CEO of Arduino. I've been in this position for the last seven years now, so it's a long, long time. And uh, prior to joining Arduino, I was CTO in an enterprise software company called BMC Software uh, that acquired my startup. So I'm an engineer as a background with a PhD in computer science, but I'm not a hardware engineer, I'm a software engineer. Okay, fantastic. And tell us a little bit about Arduino as a company. So Arduino is the company behind the, the largest open source embedded system uh, in the world. So we have mo more than 40 million uh, developers visiting our web properties every year. We have very famous tool that is the Arduino ID that is downloaded 33 million times <laughs> per year. So it's a pretty huge community, but Arduino is not only, uh, let's say, open source hardware, but it's open source development tools. And we also have cloud services and a lot of content developed by us and also by the community. So it's a very large uh, set of uh, technology and, uh, and knowledge that we provide to the, to the market. Yeah, definitely. And I'm sure most of our viewers will definitely have heard of Arduino. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, Fabio, what are the key strategic goals for the company um, in 2024 and next year in 2025, particularly regarding the, the Arduino Pro lineup? Yeah, so basically we have right now three lines of products. One is the maker's product, product for hobbyists. That, uh, that basically enjoy our technology for education is the second product line. But more recently, let's say about five years ago, we started what we call Arduino Pro. That is a line of products to enable uh, basically enterprise use cases of, uh, of our technology. So what we want to do with Arduino Pro is transfer the simplicity and ease of use of our technology uh, uh, to the enterprise world. So because we believe that is what, what, what is uh, easy for beginners can be also fast for professional. So we created a range of products that can be uh, used to take the prototypes that you make normally with Arduino into production. And, it, and we have a pretty uh, wide range now of, of product made of uh, system of modules, intelligent sensors. And two years ago, we launched what we call our uh, micro PLC. So it's called Opta and it's a, it's a product, it's a finished product. Uh, in the space of PLCs, but uh, shares the same model of programming that we have for, uh, for the uh, traditional Arduino, Arduino products. So strategically, of course, uh, we will keep doing a lot of products for, uh, for makers, but in the professional space, we will increase more and more uh, our reach in terms of system of modules, in terms of uh, new sensors that we are going to deliver with uh, more powerful capabilities. And also, we will expand the ecosystem of uh, our Opta uh, micro PLC product line, including also some options with microprocessor, not only microcontrollers. So how does Arduino plan to position the Arduino Pro in, in the competitive you know, industrial IoT landscape? So basically, uh, our focus is to lower the barrier to entry in the IoT space and by leveraging uh, our infrastructure, our cloud infrastructure, our language, uh, and, uh, and the ease of use, we are trying to be highly differentiated towards the competition, and this has been recognized already by, by several customers, because the cloud is an integral part of uh, any new deployment, but many companies, in many cases, they could not afford to do large uh, scale uh, IoT projects because they include not only embedded development, but they include also cloud and security and development of uh, uh, dashboards and uh, the application logic. So what we try to do with Arduino is to provide a sort of uh, integrated offering of hardware plus cloud, and this will, uh, will be our key differentiator, and it is already our key differentiator versus competition. So can you share with us some sort of examples of, of any specific sectors or applications that the Arduino Pro is, is targeting for expansion? So basically, we, we see uh, different use cases for the Arduino Pro product. So 
Oh, one of the first scenario, and it's one of the most popular for, uh, for us, is the brownfield, let's say, conversion. So you have an existing uh, plant, for example, with a lot of machines that have been accumulated over time with different technology, with different protocols. So what we try to do with Arduino Pro is not to replace the core automation system, but basically providing a way to connect those machines and to get data into the, into, into the cloud or into the RP from, uh, uh, and this is a, a clear, a, this is a clear trend because all the companies want to do IoT, but they don't know where to start. So this is a clear, uh, a cl a clear segment. The other important segment that we have are uh, machine builders, OEMs, uh, because in many cases, uh, you know, machines are still not connected. <laughs> and uh, what we want to provide, and uh, we see also very successful, is the ability through uh, the fact that our products have embedded connectivity, embedded security, real-time capability, uh, you basically can build machines based on Arduino technology in a much easier way. And the important thing that is a common theme for uh, almost all the technology that we deliver is the fact that many, many people know our technology. So this is a key differentiator because at the end of the day, we enable people that are, for example, in IT to do application IoT application on embedded system. And this is a large, large population. Only on LinkedIn, we have 3.2 million people wow. with the skill <laughs> are doing a formal, <laughs> formally stated in their profile. So yeah. it's a huge, huge community of developers. I mean, following on from that, I'm interested to hear how Arduino is balancing its, its open source ethos with the, the security demands of enterprise and industrial applications? Oh, this is a great question. So the point is that there is a little bit of confusion <laughs> in the world about being open and, being, being, uh, and not being secure if you are open. Because at the end of the day, when you are open, uh, and we provide a lot of tools that are open and libraries, and actually the security increases because there is a lot of scrutiny on the code, there is a, a lot of scrutiny from the community on, on what you do. It's many cases, if you look at Linux, Linux's op open source operating system is widely used in every cloud deployment. So basically what we provide are secure library that use cryptography, that use all the top-notch technology, crypto elements, etc. And then you can see the code, but this doesn't change the security. So basically, we are really proud of the level of security that you can achieve with, with open source and we will continue uh, along this route. Good. And, and what about um, AI? Because it's a big topic here at Electronica this year. So is that on the roadmap for Arduino at all? So basically, we started several years ago with the Edge AI. So we put AI in our end devices, development board, but also the, the pro board. For example, we have a uh, intelligent camera uh, based on microcontroller ultra low power that can run AI algorithms. We have uh, sensor fusion with AI on the on the on the sensors. Uh, so from the device, we will continue working on uh, adding more and more capabilities, leveraging the neural accelerator that are now uh, ubiquitous in all the new technologies uh, in our roadmap. The second area where we are working with AI is basically helping the development of code. So we have a, a big initiative within the company to add AI capabilities to our development tools, both in the cloud and uh, in the uh, offline version of the, of the ID, so that people can start developing using natural language and uh, getting to a straw man or the final code very easily because AI works very well. Uh, generative AI works very well on Arduino because there is a huge code base of library developed by us and by the community that is consistent. And we have also a certain style of writing code and documentation that is a good input for the AI models. And so the, the, the two main areas where we are we're investing are basically on the device, edge devices, more and more powerful edge sensors, but also development tools augmented with the AI. I wonder if you've got any um, sort of exciting projects or applications that you've seen in the community that, that you'd like to, to share with us that really sort of showcases the, you know, the potential of Arduino. Yeah, so we have many. Uh, talking about Pro, uh, what is, uh, was quite impressive, we have a customer uh, that we can name the customer, <laughs> it's, a, it's a company called uh, Atlas, Atlas Machines. It's a Kentucky company. They are the largest provider of air compressor in the Midwest. Uh, so basically, they, they had this 
uh, vision to retrofit all the all the plants that they developed over 20 years uh, with a lot of uh, heterogeneous technology. And uh, they started with the hardware, uh, so they use our PLC uh, to retrofit all the plants for their customers. But then they discovered our cloud services and uh, we provide them a tremendous acceleration on the projects. So they went to production in unthinkable time. So yeah. it was really crazy and impressive how they can go from the idea to the to the project. And of course, we have all sorts of funny projects made with Arduino. So uh, we have devices that have, for example, combination of uh, por the Portenta family, Portenta X8, the top of the range of Arduino product, is a combination of microprocessor and microcontroller. So we saw crazy robots made with a very sophisticated motion, controlled by the microcontroller part, but also connected with the, with the, the ROS operating system for for robots and connected to the cloud as well. So, and then service robots, AGVs, uh, we see a lot of lot of crazy crazy application. One of the craziest we have seen uh, is uh, is a company that makes uh, uh, insect traps oh. for controlling the for, for controlling the the, the pests in, for agriculture application. Yeah. So, and basically they use one of our intelligent sensors with AI. Uh, to listen to the sound of mosquitoes or whatever whatever <laughs> bugs <laughs> they they check for, and then they trigger the camera. They take a picture of the insect, and once and they also have a scale mounted on the on the device, where basically when they see that the quantity of insects is uh, is uh, enough, they will will start using pesticide. But uh, this will uh, will completely have an impact on the quantity of pesticides. Uh, they they can reduce because yeah. they can do exactly what is needed at the right moment. Yeah, what a great application. Thank you for sharing that one with us. Um, and what role does software development play in Arduino's strategy for, for not just this year, but, but next year as well? Are there any new tools or improvements in, in the IDE or libraries that we can expect? So there is a continuous effort in terms of improvements. Uh, we, are, uh, we are working on the IDE, adding more and more capabilities. We will evolve the debugging capabilities of the IDE. We are working a lot on the cloud side uh, to evolve the development tools, but also adding more and more enterprise capabilities. We already have quite a sizable quantity of features, yeah. <laughs> but uh, th that's an area. We are work also working a lot on uh, MicroPython. So we, we have a development tool that now is in what we call the Arduino Lab. So it's a sort of experimental uh, uh, set of products. And, uh, and basically we will improve also the MicroPython uh, support uh, we, we are improving also all the machine learning tools in uh, collaboration with OpenMV for machine vision. So there is, there is a lot going on right now on the software side. So I would say Arduino is mainly a software company today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and are there any new sort of partnerships or opportunities that we can look forward to in 2025? So as you know, Paige, we are the Switzerland of technology. So basically, <laughs> we work with every semiconductor company in the universe today. So we have, of course, stronger partnership with, uh, with Renaissance, with ST Micro, with uh, NXP, with Microchip, I, I, with Robert Bosch. So it is a huge number of uh, partnerships already. So basically, we always look for new technology, new ideas. So we work with the big ones, especially on the newest technology, new processor, things that will be deployed in two, three years from now. But we also work with smaller companies specializing on something, could be an intelligent sensor, could be an intelligent processor. Uh, and uh, so, so there is always a mix. So we already are working on, on new things that will be announced uh, next, uh, next year and we will continue scouting new technology as usual. Mm -hmm. And what about your partnership with DigiKey? How do you see that benefiting your customers? So DigiKey has been an amazing partner for us, honestly, because what is important about Arduino is to be available immediately when you need it. Because you start with Arduino prototyping, so having the flexibility of a company like DGT that basically has a tremendous catalog of also uh, complementary products to Arduino, but also gives the availability of Arduino uh, in, in no time, basically, it is a, a big advantage for us. So we have customers that basically uh, use uh, DigiKey and they are so happy of working with, uh, with, with DigiKey because you provide our entire catalog, basically. And uh, this is something that, uh, that is really important for us. We are growing together with, uh, with, with DigiKey and uh, uh, the results are really, really fantastic. So we are 
pushing a lot on this this partnership. Now we started an office in uh, in the U.S. Uh, last year, uh, so so we also are uh, increasing our relationship with the, the DG key and we push forward. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your insights today, thank Fabio. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure speaking with you, and we look forward to seeing the company grow next year. Thank you very much. Thank you.